All right, welcome back to Doctrines 2 as we continue on our study of Christology, uh, the study of who Jesus is and what he did. Uh, we've talked uh, last week about the atonement and finished up that discussion about what Christ did uh, and accomplished in his death. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about his resurrection uh, and ascension this week. Uh, and I want to ask the question, did Jesus really rise from the dead? Uh, now, of course, as a Christian, this kind of becomes a, a, a major question. Uh, do you really believe that Jesus literally rose from the dead in bodily form, uh, ascended to heaven, and is now seated personally and physically at the right hand of God the Father and will return uh, physically uh, at the end of the age? Uh, so the question here, did Jesus really rise from the dead, uh, becomes a major question for the entire New Testament. Because uh, when Jesus did rise from the dead, he did not present himself to the priests. He did not present himself to the Pharisees. He did not present himself to Pilate. Instead, he only presented himself to his own disciples uh, and those who would follow him. Uh, so if you think about this, when, G when Jesus uh, appears to Thomas, he says to Thomas, You believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who believe even though they have not seen. Uh, in another conversation that he had before his death, Philip asked him, uh, why is it that you manifest yourself to us and not to the rest of the world? Which was a very good question because why did Jesus not present himself in the temple to the Pharisees, to the Sadducees, to the Sanhedrin, to the high priests, uh, saying, here I am, I'm alive, uh, because this entire thing was supposed to be centered around faith. Blessed are you who have seen, or uh, you have believed because you've seen. Blessed are those who believe even though they have not seen. And so uh, this entire new thing, this church, the gospel message, was going to be spread by word of mouth, by testimony, by witness, by uh, the fact that they would be their, his witnesses, which is exactly what he says to them in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You shall be my witnesses witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the uttermost parts of the world, they were testifying that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. Uh, this becomes central to the entire New Testament. All four Gospels not only record Jesus Christ's resurrection, but it's the very climax of the narrative of each of the books that Jesus Christ, uh, not only was there an empty tomb, but, there were, but that he appeared and made his appearance known to his disciples. They were the witnesses. They were the ones who were then going and telling the story. Uh, the book of Acts, again, begins with a resurrected Christ, telling his disciples to go proclaim the good news, pro to proclaim uh, their testimony that they had seen him raised from the dead. Of course, uh, records his ascension into heaven. Uh, and of course, also records his appearance to Paul, or to Saul of, of Tarsus, uh, who would later be known as Paul, uh, on the road to Damascus, uh, converting him simply by him appearing to him and seeing that he was in fact raised from the dead. Uh, and so the, the, the appear not only the appearance of Jesus Christ raised from the dead, but the, the spread of that news, the spread of the, God, uh, of the good news that Christ raised from the dead, that, he can, that we can now have our sins forgiven, is central to the preaching of the book of Acts. It's central to this message being pro proclaim, proclaimed throughout the Roman world, ending in the, the, the capital city of Rome. The epistles all uh, depend entirely on the assumption of Jesus Christ raised from the dead. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If Christ is not raised from the dead, then we are of all men to, the most to be pitied uh, because uh, we would have no hope. We have no message. We have no gospel if Jesus Christ is not raised from the dead. Uh, the book of Revelation repeatedly shows uh, the risen Christ, uh, uh, the, the Lamb of God, uh, seated at the right hand of God the Father, uh, coming again, uh, ruling over this earth uh, in the millennial kingdom, and uh, reigning over the new heaven and new earth uh, for all eternity uh, in the book of Revelation. So all of these things rely on, depend on, a resurrected Jesus Christ. 
Uh, that's just the New Testament evidence of this, and that's really all we have. There is no external evidence. There is no uh, historical background outside of the New Testament or outside of the testimony of the church, and that's precisely the point. The point is, is that you can now testify to a resurrected Christ because of what he has done in your life in salvation, what he has done in your life in blessing you uh, and sanctifying you. Uh, and as you now go and you, you take God's word, you take the gospel with you, uh, and you are now his witnesses uh, of this evidence. And so basically, the evidence of Christ's return, you have an empty tomb, you have uh, uh, eyewitness accounts, and many of them. Uh, 1 Corinthians says that upwards of 500 of his disciples saw him at one time. All 11 of his remaining disciples, plus Matthias, who become the 12th apostle, plus Paul, plus James, the brother of Jesus, all uh, testify to Christ's resurrection to the point of death. They take that to the grave with them, uh, and all of the apostles, uh, with the exception of John, meet a, uh, a martyr's death. Uh, they were willing to take that, uh, that evidence, that, they were willing to take that witness, that testimony, to their grave, proclaiming that Christ has risen, and of course he is risen indeed.